Everyone, this is Ross, and we're back from the Staten Island Fig Festival of 2019. It was an awesome event. Um, I got to meet a lot of you guys. It was cool uh, seeing everyone's passion and, and giving you guys some figs, some fresh figs off my own trees, and seeing you know your faces light up and say, oh, that's really good. Even things like just a, a Villette de Bordeaux, people were really blown away by. Um, so that was awesome. I got to meet um, someone actually flew in from Dubai, Amat came in from Dubai. That was really cool. Uh, a man named Ben asked me a couple questions that were really thought provoking. And I also got to see uh, my buddy Chris's place. We went over to his place in Staten Island. We brought over the, the fig pizza that we made. Maybe you guys saw that video or it should be coming out soon. We made a pizza with figs on it. It was phenomenal. We brought it over to his place got to share the pizza with him and then he showed me his backyard and um, it was nice to see what he's doing and his ideas and it was really thought-provoking because he's got a lot of land he doesn't have a lot of land doesn't have a lot of space so he's really limited and needs to make good decisions I think now so that it's not biting him in the in the butt later and uh, it kind of got me putting myself into a a thought-provoking state and thinking about this when I was first starting out the mistakes I had made and I didn't want him to make those same mistakes so I kind of do in a way that because when you make mistakes you learn you get better at this you can't you can't really not make a mistake and the more mistakes you, ha you make honestly you're better off for it but to avoid certain varieties certain genetics I think is really smart and I want to talk to you guys about in this video certain varieties that I'm propagating and why I'm making copies of them um, and kind of getting rid of the rest. I have over, I think somewhere around 200 varieties. I maintain at this point 300 different varieties that are um, either the same variety. They may be like, you know, a couple RDBs or a couple Villette de Bordeaux. But uh, at overall, there's 300 different varieties that I maintain, whether it's uh, one limb grafted onto a Franken fig, and there might be five different varieties. Those count as five. So it's a lot to maintain, but it's a, it's a very eye-opening experience just to know that obviously there's some that just are way better than the others. It's very obvious to me. Um, and then also Ben kind of had that thought, a couple of thought-provoking questions, but one of them was talking about what do I look for in a new fig? What is some of the characteristics here that when I look for in a new fig, what is it that I, I look for? That's just a really difficult question to answer. And uh, I think in this video, we're not gonna really get to all that, but you can kind of get an idea in your head based off of the figs that I'm choosing here from my climate, looking at all those, and you can obviously get a nice little characteristic list from all those figs and you could potentially uh, get an idea. But I think that video, that thought process needs to be in its own video that's probably at least an hour or two hours long. Um, it's a very uh, detailed question uh, that has to be answered. But I guess the first one here we'll start with, uh, this is a fig called Pastillier, and this is a fig that I really, really value. I've got to taste it this year. It's wonderful. Um, it's beautiful, it's early, it's got almost everything here, all the characteristics except that it likes to drop at a young age and it takes about three years. We have an air layer down here on the bottom of one of these limbs, but uh, I have four different sources of this tree. Some that are more vigorous, some that are less vigorous. Uh, some that may potentially not drop at all. So uh, you may not have to wait three years and that was my goal, but this is certainly one that's also quite hardy. That's just an in-ground winner and uh, I'm propagating a bunch of these to put them in the ground for that purpose. I already have four different sources of them. Here we have a uh, Ronde de Bordeaux. We talk a lot about this fig year after year. This is one of the earliest figs, just like Pastillier. Uh, it's reasonably hardy and it just does really well. Even if it dies all the way down to the base, it has the ability to fruit from dieback. It's a wonderful fig, even in a pot. Uh, this tree I got from my buddy Chris because I gave my other one to my other buddy Chris. And uh, 
I wasn't sure if my in-ground RDB was gonna survive. It came back from the base very late this year out of all the trees. And um, it did come back, but we put, I think like three or four or five air layers on it. So we're gonna have a number of these RDBs for next year. We're gonna put them, some of them in the ground, and but most of them I think are gonna remain in pots. Uh, here we have Old Day Purdue, which, well, I'm not even gonna mention that, but that's definitely one that I have high hopes for. Here's Col Noir. This is one of my rooted cuttings from this winter. And Col Noir uh, is a very similar fig. I have one in the ground over there. It's very similar, if not the same. It needs to be just confirmed. I'm 99.9% sure it's the same thing as Sucret. And I'll show you guys my Sucret tree. We have an air layer on that because Sucret was one of the biggest winners here uh, in my yard. It's very good, has good drying capabilities. You can see it here. The crop's done. It fruited in early August for me with the help of the greenhouse. You can see the air layer down here, which it looks like, no, I'm not seeing any roots just yet, but that's not a big deal. We still have plenty of time. Point is this thing is a winner and it really should be considered, I think, in a lot of people's yards throughout the, the world, really. Not, it's not just a fig that will do well here. It seems to be a wonderful fig just about everywhere. It's got a nice, dense, jammy pulp, and it also has the ability to dry on the tree. It's just, it's just nuts. Even here, in a pretty humid climate, it dries on the tree. Uh, we also have things like Borgia Soak Grease. Uh, this is one of my Borgia Soak Grease cuttings. I have probably five or six of these. And you can see one right in the ground right here with fruit on it at the bottom. And this was rooted as a cutting. This was a cutting I just rooted this winter time. It's already probably three or four feet tall, each limb. It's covered in fruit. Uh, it's just an extremely precocious, good producer. It grows well and it fruits well. And that's something that you don't normally see all the time. Like this fig back in here, the golden rainbow, you can see a big fruit down there. But as it grows, it puts out fruits. And that's a very interesting, positive characteristic here of these particular fruits. Golden rainbow is also very early, but I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna be propagating more of them. While I do have two of them, I'm not entirely sold just yet. Another one here that I'm propagating is called Fico Love. And unfortunately, this fig seems to wanna to drop its figs at a young age as well. So you may have to wait a couple years for it. Uh, it seems to be quite vigorous. You need to slow down that vigor a bit, but it's also an extremely hardy variety. And that's why I have a number of these in the ground. We're not propagating it any more than we are, but I think I have three or four of them in the ground. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? This is Blanche de Du Cezanne. I have an air layer on it right now. This is a wonderful, wonderful fig. Very Colvinom esque. That is just fantastic. Uh, it really is a bit underrated, under the radar. Not many people know about it. Let's see, what else do we have here? We got a bunch of French figs, different things that I've been kind of looking forward to. Here is a Aishia Black from a French conservatory. And uh, this is a fig that has been highly sought after in the United States for years. It's been almost kind of on the same level as Black Madeira as an example, which you're looking at right here. And I have another one down this way of Aishia Black. But this is the, uh, the UC Davis version. You can see how diseased it is and how unhealthy it looks. And uh, I don't have many of these. I have another one over here. You can see that I rooted as a cutting, but look how small it is, right? But this is a highly regarded, very tasty fig that isn't even too late here in this climate. Um, so it should be a winner here and it's kind of like similar in shape and I would say most characteristics to a Violette de Bordeaux except that it's better but because it's been so riddled with disease it's been an issue but the idea was to find one in, from Europe um, that eventually made its way into the United States was to find one that was of healthier stock because all the varieties at UC Davis 
just were riddled with fig mosaic virus and uh, some of them were affected more than others like the Ishia Black UC Davis was largely affected by the virus so by finding one here that potentially is the same thing we don't know just yet but I have two figs down here you can see how healthy it is and how well it grows and how many figs it puts out very easily this could be a great winner I have one of these in the ground you never know it could also be Villette de Bordeaux but worst case scenario I have another Villette de Bordeaux I have a, I have a couple of these I am trying to propagate more of the UC Davis version and more of the the version from the Pork Rolls Conservatory in France. Uh, it's also a very early fig, this particular one. So who knows what it'll end up being, but uh, I'm excited for it. What else we got here that we're propagating? We have a lot of Smith, guys. A lot of Smith. And uh, we talk a lot about Smith. This is honestly my best overall fig as it stands right now. We still have more figs that are coming in that uh, could potentially replace it, and I think will. We also have the Azores Dark, which we've been propagating a lot of. This is a very dense, jammy pulp, just like the, the Smith. Really incredible, whiny, berry, elegant flavor. We talk a lot about those figs, guys. Um, without a doubt, two that you need to have here in the, uh, in the Northeast. This is also Campaneri that we got to <coughs> evaluate. Excuse me, guys. Um, Campaneri is a wonderful, wonderful fig that I think is going to replace Smith as my best overall fig. And that's really saying something. Um, it's got a great pulp. We just did a video on it. Um, and the tree is extremely hardy, very rain resistant. Um, it's got everything. It's very early. You name it. We also have a fig here called Neruccio de Elba which is an honest, in honesty going to be one of my favorites, um, I think for the future. I'm, I'm actually propagating this quite a bit. You can see there's a, an air layer right there that's pretty much done, very easy. I could take it off right now if I wanted, but I think I'm gonna put a lot of those in the ground. I think that's gonna be my goal this year is we're gonna chop this whole thing back and root as many of these as I can to then plant next spring. I think that's actually the number one variety that I wanna plant here in the ground. Um, let's see, we have some other ones in here that I could go on about, but I think there's very specific trees like my Nero 600M, I have a Smith in the ground. These are the figs that I've been propagating a lot and really highly valuing a lot. Let's keep going here. Let's go to the patio. Um, we also have a white Madeira air layer right here, this white Madeira number one. And this is a, a fig that is very cold and nom-esque. I have friends that really love it. Everyone seems to really like it. It definitely separates itself from the Adriatic type. So I'm excited. We grafted this and now I'm air layering off a piece of that graft, a piece of that new growth um, to put that one in the ground here. And hopefully, if it really proves itself well, we can make even more copies of it in the future. I also seem to really like Cavalieri. I have a couple of these as it is, so I don't need to make more copies of it. But it hasn't really rained all that much, it seems like, this year. The rain's been uh, more on the, the lower side, so it, we've gotten away with having more Cavalieri's ripen and get them to perfection. Another one that I am making many copies of, I have big plans for this. This is Col de Nom Blanc. I was blown away. Even with the greenhouse head start here, uh, it was able to ripen in early August, 90 days after pinching. And uh, this is just an incredible piece of fruit. It is the best. It's the best one I have. Uh, I always look forward to this. I compare all of them to this one. The issue is I haven't really gotten the most and the best productivity from it. So I think I need to feed it more um, or get it on a more vigorous rootstock. So we're gonna either root these or we're going to really focus on grafting them onto something very vigorous like my raspberry latte uh, rootstock that I have. Um, another one back here that I have high hopes for which we're not propagating just yet, this is Izmir Knot. It's kind of shady back here, but you can see some fruit down there ripening. Whereas the real Izmir that I have dropped all of its figs once again this year. So um, yeah, 
uh, I'm kind of gonna just gonna stick with the Izmir knot. It's really cold and esque. Another fig that I really like is uh, Socorro Black. Mid season, very productive. Uh, it's mid to late season, but it's very similar to Smith and Azores Dark in terms of flavor and the pulp. It's an exceptional quality fig. It's growing really well. It's doing really well. We're gonna make copies of this. I think I'm gonna put one of them in the ground and see, see how it does here. Um, definitely want more copies of this particular fig. Let's see, what else do we got here? Let's keep going. <clears throat> um, let's see, oh, here's another Neruccio de Elba that I really like. We also have, uh, sort of right next to it, is a fig called Hated de Argentile. And Hated de Argentile really tastes like cherries, guys. It has an interesting cherry flavor. It's early. I would say it's mid-season, actually. It's rain resistant, it doesn't need a head start, it produces really well, but my issue with it is that it needs to be grafted. If it's not grafted, it doesn't do well. And you can see one back over here. This is kind of why I've been grafting a number of these trees. This one's just now fruiting, almost a whole month later than the grafted version of Hated the Argentile. And the fruits, have some of them have dropped off. Uh, it's been a mess dealing with this this thing's a year older it's quite a big difference from year to year another one that seems to be really good is dn manel and i really believe that this is very similar to grease de saint jean a french fig without a doubt dn manel and grease de saint jean i've been propagating as many of them as possible uh, a fig that i had good hopes for and high hopes for was planera and what we had to do is because my planera tree really didn't do much of anything this year. We had to chop it all the way down to the base. And this is a form of rejuvenation pruning. So by getting this thing rejuvenated, it's now putting out a new branch, a very healthy branch. I mean, there is still some fig mosaic virus there, but without a doubt, this is the way to go to rejuvenate this tree to get this thing back to a healthier state and to restart the tree. But this is a very early fig, a very tasty fig. However, it splits. But because it's so early, I could potentially get this fig, definitely put it in the greenhouse, and get this one to ripen sometime in July. And if it ripens in July when there's very little rain and a lot of heat, uh, it should be a winner. We're also propagating right next to it. This is a uh, Rasty's Persian Unknown. And Rasty's Persian Unknown is probably the most reliable fig, I think, that exists. What I'm doing is propagating one to put in the ground. And I think it could potentially be when all else, when all the other figs fail, this one succeeds. The same thing with uh, the Ruchiola de Elba. I really like this fig. I really think it has wonderful potential for in-ground uh, production. Let's see, what else do we have here? Another fig that I really like is Albo. And uh, Albo is done producing here. We grafted it. Um, it's a medium to small size honey fig, but it's got awesome berry tones to it. And those berry tones really make the fig something special. I kind of liken it to Bibera Branca or LSU Huye, and to me, it just fills that category perfectly. Here we have my mother Smith here that's just rebounding from a hard pruning that we did. Uh, Violette de Bordeaux. This is Petite Albique, just covered in figs. It's been covered in figs, guys. This tree is always super productive. We also have Verdino del Nord back here. This is also called Figoin. You can see an air layer down there. And uh, this guy is pretty close to being ready here. We'll get to taste it again this year. Red eye, small fig, really ripens well and dries well. I'm excited for that one. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have another Violet de Bordeaux type behind me here. Oh, one fig that I'm really liking here is the Daloso. This has uh, really been an impressive quality of fruit. Yeah, some of them do have that mule characteristic to them, which I think is actually a disadvantage to the fig but it's a really interesting flavor to it. It seems to be early to mid season, very rain resistant. It's wonderful. Um, also LSU Tiger here. This fig is just out of this world good. 
I have it in the form right here we're looking at as Calderwood Unknown. You can see the big spade, spade leaves. This is my favorite LSU fig along with LSU Huye I'm finding. Just wonderful. It has Concord berry flavors to it. It's really, really tasty. Um, we also have behind over here in this mess of trees is a bunch of air layers on a particular variety called White Triana. And I have a number of these. I have one in the ground and one of them here in a pot and it just is a winner. It's very reminiscent in my mind to Col de Don Blanc, but you need to really let it ripen for a long time. Unfortunately, this year, it didn't seem to respond well from the, the hard pruning that I gave it. So we may have to rethink that one, really get a better idea on that one. But for me so far, it's been a winner. Um, really impressed me last year with it. So we're gonna have to see if we can get it to a more mature state to evaluate it again. But uh, yeah, that's just a wonderful, wonderful fig. We'll come around this side here and show you guys some varieties. Let's see, what are we looking at that really impressed me? Um, this fig down here, this is a Del San Wami Gran. And the Del San Wami Gran is just a, a fantastic tasting variety. It seems to only need 90 days after pinching, which is really nice. And it's got a nice, awesome, jammy pulp to it. That's kind of reminds me of like a green Italian 258 or like a green black Madeira, the real white Madeira, in my opinion. Um, let's see, what else do we have over here? Something that's been interesting to me. A couple of these figs are quite interesting, but it's hard to really get good value out of them. I mean, all the Col de Doms here are doing really well. There's Col de Dom Noir, Roja, Blanc, Grease. They're all doing quite well, but they're a bit late compared to the Col de Dom Blanc that I have. Something that is impressive though, out of all the late varieties, is this fig here, Syndrosa. You can see how many figs are on this, this tree. It's just stupid. It's really vigorous and it's also really productive. And it's a huge fig that ripens quite late. It takes about 110, 120 days to ripen from pinching, but it's good, it's big, and uh, yeah, it's just a wonderful fig. We also have De La Roca back in here, and this is another late fig that I have decided to keep and propagate. De La Roca is from Ponds, and uh, this is very Cold and esque very, very similar. Got a couple air layers on this because we're going to do the same thing we did to our planera is that we're going to rejuvenate, do some rejuvenation pruning this year and really just restart the whole thing. I'll cut it all the way down to the base to restart the entire tree. Um, all right, let's keep going. What else do we have over here that we're propagating a lot of? <clears throat> oh, the two figs I want to mention to you guys that we didn't yet is Black Celeste and Blue Celeste. These are two Celeste heirlooms that you can find in different forms all over the country. Um, some of them can even come from France. They're really, really tasty figs. Deserve a wonderful spot in your yard, especially in the ground. Um, I have another one back over here called Violette de Marseille. This one originated in France. Actually, it's right here. A little bit of fig mosaic virus, but this is a wonderful, wonderful Black Celeste styled fig that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, we have a couple pastelliers over here from different sources. We've got different things. Oh, here's a fig that we didn't really talk about. This is a fig called, uh, oh wait, this one over here is called Fico Seco. This one comes from Paolo Bologna's collection. You can see a good shot of it right there. And uh, that's probably the only fruit I'm gonna get off of this one, but I have a few others that we just planted in the ground as well. It's a very old fig, ancient. They think it's you know, 300, 400, 500 years old at least. Um, and there's evidence of that. The tree still exists today. Um, so, this is a really well-adapted, very hardy, very early, rain-resistant variety. It comes in different forms, whether it's Fico Seco or Moro de Caneva or Nerino. I think they're all very similar to each other. 
What is this guy right here? I don't remember. Uh, oh. oh, this is uh, another Pastelier type. We have Vertolino, which actually I'm excited for quite a bit. And then more Campanieri down here. And uh, there's not much else to show you guys, I think, but there is one that I have in mind that deserves this little attention. Oh, another one here. This is a JFE Black Madeira Knot. And people believe this, this is the same thing as um, Colonel Littman's, and I agree. I think this is the same thing as Colonel Littman's when they had Black Madeira. They sent Colonel Littman's instead. There was a big mix up years ago and uh, even their Black Madeira that they originally had, I believe, was the real Black Madeira. People just don't understand leaf patterns. But um, the JFE Black Madeira knot, I believe, is Colonel Littman's. And that's a fig that's mid-season and much earlier than Black Madeira and more rain-resistant than Black Madeira and uh, is a vigorous, vigorous grower. So I'm excited for that one um, to see if Colonel Littman's can potentially replace Black Madeira. In fact, I have a Colonel Littman's planted in the greenhouse for commercial production. I think that's gonna be one that actually does quite well. Um, let's see, what else am I really propagating here? One fig that I'm looking forward to, we talked about Borges Soak Grease and Violet Sapor. This one here is called Black Reek, which I find to be pretty similar. Even maybe Socorro Black could be very similar figs to all those I just mentioned. I'm not sure just yet on all of them. Um, oh, the one that I really wanted to mention to you guys, we have a couple Moro de Canevas over here and a couple Fico Secos. I think this is a, this is a Moro de Caneva right here. Um, that's a Grease de Saint Jean. We have a, a Campanieri, but also down here is a fig called Figujan, and this is a very early French fig. Ripens just as early, if not earlier, than Ron de Bordeaux. It's, it's got a great flavor to it. Beautiful fig, definitely a winner. We have a Blue Celeste over there. Uh, we have LSU Champagne over here. Azores Dark in the ground, and then this fig here that I wanted to talk about specifically. This is LDA, and LDA is really quite a winner here guys this guy puts out big figs that are early very tasty it's productive it's hardy it's got everything here it's just a wonderful wonderful fig I've already got an air layer on it you can see it grows and produces figs which definitely helps harden up this wood slow it down a bit slow down that vigor um, so I'm excited for a lot of these fruits guys and we're gonna be kind of just making copies of everything I just said and there may be some in the future that replace these or eventually I come up to the conclusion that, all right, well, maybe LSU Huye isn't better than Albo or maybe Albo isn't better than LSU Huye. You know, they kind of fill a similar gap. They kind of fill a similar thing. Or maybe I might find that Moro de Caneva is very similar to Daloso or something and I, I want to get rid of Daloso. Maybe the Daloso, because it produces those mule figs, doesn't live up to the productivity that it should or you know maybe smith does end up getting beat out by something you know eventually we're going to keep narrowing this down further and further but i'll tell you this we're getting rid of quite a bit this year because uh yeah we just we just don't need all these varieties why should i have another black madeira when i can have an azores dark uh, why would I have another Italian 258 when it splits in the rain when I can have something like a Coldedon Blanc? You know, I guess they're very different figs, but that's a similar time of the year that they ripen. Always in early August with the greenhouse head start. So anyway, guys, I hope this sort of helps some people, uh, leads them in the right direction. I know this is just for my climate too. This isn't for everybody. But, uh, you know, I, this is like six years in the making of coming to these conclusions and, you know, that's definitely worth something. So, all right, everyone, we'll talk to you all soon. Again, I want to thank everyone for making it out to the Staten Island Fig Festival. That was pretty cool. I uh, hope to see everyone there next year. 
We'll talk to you all soon. Take care, everyone.